Hi everyone, how you doing? Right, so, um, so yeah, um, probably some of you were here like two months ago. Uh, we presented this as pages, uh, it's changed the name as you can see there. It's called ViewCX. And I'll just do like a you know, quick recap of what that is really. Um, just for qu like a quick question. Um, <laughs> how many of you actually build front-end apps? Yeah, that's pretty much the whole room, good stuff. Um, how many of you actually like uh, say work uh, with designers or have designers on your teams when you're working on this? Yeah, do we have any designers here? No, why that, that always comes on? Oh, there's one, there you go, very good. And uh, yeah, you, you may like this. Um, I actually had somebody say that to me the other day, it's like finally somebody that builds something for us. Uh, it's not for them only, it's for all of us anyways. But, um, so, when you work with designers, um, how does it generally go? Uh, can you tell me, like, if you know you generally get, like, I don't know, a sketch or Illustrator sort of output sampling if you are not in the hip days and so on, and then you kind of have to translate them to your code? Do you kind of do that, or how does that generally work? Yeah, no, nobody. Ooh, nobody gets. Yes. Nothing. Oh, very good. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. So if you get that, anyways, um, we are trying to solve that problem, so you don't have to do it anymore. And it's a constant, constant collaboration between designers and developers. And yeah, we call it Views DX, and it's kind of like design as you build. So a uh, couple of things that changed from like the last talk. Um, like basically, what it is is that we've uh, reworked the language, and uh, we created like this sort of uh, how you say it. Uh, we call it the Views language, um, and it's a way of defining things. You'll see now in a bit. Uh, it's a simplified language, it has no um, punctuation, uh, like no dashes, no columns, no nothing that we would be used to seeing in development. Uh, more important than that, it doesn't have indentation, uh, which are things that were always scaring off designers, and that's one of the like sort of cons when, whenever they go into this, and it always like puts them off when looking at code. So yeah, so we try to make it more approachable by them. Uh, we also implemented uh, stuff like continuous thinking. You can have uh, your application continuously like loading changes and, and whatnot. And we're gonna try to show that now in a bit. And um, views, as you will see now, for the ones I haven't seen before, uh, introduces like a different language. It's not um, React, it's not uh, Ember, it's not Angular, it's none of those. Um, it's something else. And as something else, it needs to get translated into that thing. Luckily for us, it happens automatically. And uh, what we introduce now is that um, instead of happening uh, when you are building your view, it now happens next to your application. What does that mean for us, really? We can morph to anything. So another one that's kind of big as well is uh, we introduced, uh, just to lower the barrier again of entry, we introduced importing from CSS, SVG, JSON, and Sketch. So that's not minor at all. And you can actually just get started much quicker now if you're cracking on it. Um, on top of that, like we just made the editor smarter. Yeah, there are a couple of things there, like creating things faster and so on, we'll go through it then. And uh, yeah, so we open learn.vsdx.com. Basically, you can just go there and like learn about what this, this thing called DX. Uh, and uh, we're also publishing like a bunch of different things. Like there's a uh, humongous tutorial there, it's actually pretty big. And you can all just follow it if you wanna try what DX is, try views, and you know, if you go to it, you can just, you know, it's a very step-by-step -step thing. And yeah, we also kick-started the Slack community uh, on slackvsdx.com. So we have a bunch of people that are already like happily like chatting away every now and then. And that's about that. So if you go to viewsdx.com, you can try the public preview. And this is just like a, a bit of a um, demo for what you would see. Uh, no, that's not an error. Those are two different windows. And we did like um, Fruit Hunters app. Um, in the long run, that may even help you eat better. I don't know. For the time being, we just have two random things, Mr. Banana and Mr. Strawberry, and you can hire them, basically. So, you know, this just to illustrate really uh, a sample app that you would have, which would have like a list of something that opens something else, right, which is quite a common pattern. So, yeah, as you can expect, when I click that, it just opens something, and we see Mr. Banana jumping. And we have a bunch of actions, like, you know, we can like it or save it for later, and then we can just hire that and just come back and go to an X and whatnot, right? Um, the relevant bit here is not that, so we have, um, as I was saying before, uh, this all comes down from uh, these massive posts. So if you go here, you will find all the different steps, and you can follow it yourselves and do it, and here's our, like, mock-up made out of Lego, so, yeah. Feel free to use whatever you want there. And yeah, so just to like 
get you probably a little bit there. Uh, is that visible for people there on the back? Sorry, right. I have the screen, yeah. So yeah, so this is views uh, for the ones I had seen as pages. It has a rebump of colors and a bunch of other things. That's not the most relevant. The most relevant is the syntax probably. So um, yeah, so we ca we have like, a, as I was saying before, no punctuation, no nothing. Um, spaces separate things. When you mess things up, it will actually tell you. So we have here like remove three empty lines before that, and that's how you can kind of fix that. So we introduce a bunch of things that are called like say uh, first of all that new line thing is called proximity nesting. It's one of the features of the language, um, and yeah, we also have live editing as you can see there. That's not about typing it. It's Tom somewhere in Spain, and uh, we also introduce these as like you know when you have like certain errors, which in development uh, generally they would like uh, stall things and you would see uh, you know, either everything breaking or not. What we figured was that we have to be permissive while coding, and that's the way that we can integrate designers on it. So we introduced that concept that kind of tells you like, how, can you, how you can go about fixing things. You know, what's going on that might be broken that may just make it work. So yeah, so that's kind of that. And then um, we have, uh, of course, like you know, with anything, we have like the dev environment here. It's the same thing, and we also have, as I was saying before, sort of like the um, uh, syncing tools, and this is constantly syncing my app, so if I were to go here and hopefully change something and then you know, kind of save it, uh, that should be reflecting on my app on the side, as we can see there on the preview, and we would get like a notification and so on, and so this is just the beginning of that. And at the time being, that's just uh, morphing to React, and there is an experimental, very experimental morph to React Native. Um, and that's about that, we made a library of, um, icons already that people can start using, and there are a few more that are like sort of um, UI helpers uh, sort of thing that will be a, like a Google material sort of UI kit and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, the, yeah, there are a bunch of other things there, like on it. If uh, anybody wants to have a, like a go at it, just go to like viewsdx.com and you can go to a post and from there on you get all the details to sort of like uh, Log in and try it on and so on and and the next step that we have up is um, to have a uh, like the launch of the beta, which is uh, where you can actually like uh, create your own apps and use it at your own projects and so on. So um, yeah, don't know if there are any questions. I wanted to make it very short, by the way, so <laughs> hopefully it was. Yeah, that's that. Um, is it so? <coughs> has it been used in production already? Like I know it only went to public beta, but has uh, it been used by? Yeah, so as a matter of fact, yeah, it's a bit of a lie actually. It's not, it's like, it's not like just now that we launched it. Like we've been using uh, views as pages for the last like 10 months, I'll say, in production. This is being used by HMH. Uh, in about, we have about like, I don't know, uh, 50 million users. That's their user base uh, in the States. They are like a big publishing company. Um, so this is already being rolled out from day one to production on the, the produce code. Um, by the way, is anybody interested in seeing what it produces or like, yeah, no, yeah, cool, I can show you that. So we have like say, um, let's go here real quick. Type in one hand, it's not that handy. So um, yeah, so we will have some React code here, for instance. Um, and that would be a, a map of that, like a fruit for higher view. Uh, so essentially, it boils down to like the regular components that you would expect on any app. Like in this case, uh, we have like, uh, let me just put it next side by side with the other one. So once you sync your code, uh, it brings everything. So there's no vendor locking. Essentially, you get all you produce sold there, and you can use like the. Um, by the way, sorry, one thing that I did mention is that this code that you see here on on this panel is uh, is the views code, right? And the we we produce like a spec that defines how you can actually like create that kind of code. So there is a lot of there are a lot of things there, like say um, I don't know naming blocks, which is really handy for things like UA, for instance. And you can go like say fruit for hire is vertical. Now vertical is something that stacks things like that. Uh, it's one of those flex direction things that I can never remember what they are. And you know inside of that we have say CSS properties, right? Now you wonder how does that come to a div, which you know a bunch of properties inside. Well, whenever we get that code, we convert that to an abstract syntax tree AST in JavaScript. 
and from that point on, we morph it to whatever we want. So in this case, we are morphing it to uh, React code in that case. Um, all of that stuff will be open source. So you know, if you say like, well, I kind of like the idea, but I don't, don't like your editor, go for it. You can use it, make it better. We are going to open that very soon uh, to a larger community. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of like the, the code that it produces. You can see here, it also, um, we have this concept of like uh, nested things. So for instance, in, um, in this view, there is a, uh, another view that is being used, which is like the store icon, right? That you can see there, it's an SVG. And um, you, you know, that would be created as a separate component in React Lingo and for most, most of the other implementations as well. Um, so yeah, the cool thing about it is that, you know, we, um, so for instance, with the case of uh, these icons here, for the time we change our app as it's not that anymore, it's just like, you know, a cycle thing. I just swap it for, you know, another icon and so on. And then, the, and then we introduce this mode where you can edit things in context, so you can see it at point of use, which is probably um, handier for that. So, yeah. Any other questions? No. All right. Thanks very much. Cool. Great.